culture and people. And I look back and, yeah, the images are nice, but I missed the experience. And now I tend to think, yeah, the experience counts for a whole lot and it probably makes the work better as well. That's a huge, huge lesson. You did a lot of reading while you were on the road, if I remember correctly. If there were, say, three books or so that affected or impacted you the most, what are they and what made a difference? One of my biggest books that I've read in this past year that's made a huge difference is called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. It's a, he's a philosopher that lived about 2,000 years ago. And it's basically, if you've ever read Proverbs in the Bible, it's very similar type of philosophy, just short bits that you could kind of pick up anywhere. But he talks a lot about death. And I know that might sound a little bit morbid for some people, but for me, it it was always a good reminder that our lives are short, they're always changing, and we have such a small window of time to do what we want to do. And so I've actually spent probably 75% of the mornings this past year uh, reading that for at least 10 to 15 minutes to just kind of remind myself of, um, you know, how how short our lives are and to kind of put things into the broad perspective before I let the the craziness of every day just kind of get to me. Um, so that book has been very impactful. And um, does it have to be books that we read on this trip? Oh, no, just okay. some influences. <laughs> Yeah. The other one for me uh, is a book that everyone has probably heard of called The Alchemist. And that's been my one of my favorite books for a long time. Just the story of the young boy who who went out in search of you know his dream of finding gold at the pyramids. And um, that book has played a huge impact in my life. And I'm reading a book right now that I would absolutely refer to people um, that my good friend recommended to me called Slowing Down to the Speed of Life, which is all about trying to basically escape the, um, you know, like when we're listening, when we're talking and having a conversation with people to not be worrying or thinking about other things, but how to be fully present in the moment and to not be um, basically have our minds like we live in this constant state of anxiety and rush. And that's my I would say that is one of my biggest flaws is I struggle with that. Like I'll go watch a movie at the movie theater with Alyssa, I will go on a date and I'll be thinking about work and it steals away my life. It like is a slow, slow death of stealing away like the parts of my life that should be filled with joy because I'm in I'm in this certain moment and I'm thinking about work that is going to be done bef- like later that day or the next week or that may never happen. And it steals away from the joy. And, and, and I had that happen so much on our trip that I've really I really am committing myself to figure out that solution myself because I know that all the stress comes from within me and that they're not induced by outside situations, but my reactions to those situations. And so I'd I'd recommend this that book to a lot of people. What about you? There's a bunch of books I feel like that have slowly pushed us into taking this leap because a lot of people ask us, you know, like, how do you come up with this crazy convoluted idea to turn your honeymoon into this trip where you travel and you do a road trip and you take an RV and you work these jobs? Because I mean, I mean, that evolved very slowly over time. But I think it all started whenever Heath and I were just started dating and he was about to drive to Colorado. And it was a 24 hour drive from Austin to Colorado. And uh, he was at my apartment. He was about to leave. He said, do you have a book that I can borrow to read along the way? So I handed him uh, A Million Miles in a Thousand Years by Donald Miller, which, um, you know, he's a renowned author and he has a lot of amazing bits of wisdom. And so Heath read that book and it's all about, um, you know, living a life that uh, (laughs) is adventurous and, and memorable and, you know, Leave, leaves a mark. And so uh, that really pushed us in a lot of ways in our relationship early on where we were like, you yes. know, we want to take adventures. We want to create these, these stories with our lives that are, that are impactful. And I, I really love that book. And that's like the first book I read of, of Donald Miller. And so one day I saw that he tweeted, you know, I'm giving away my audiobook for free for this book called Three Painted Deserts. And I'm like, I've never heard of this book that he wrote. And it turns out it's the very first book that he wrote. And I actually heard an interview with him a couple weeks ago where he said that this was like the worst piece of crap that he'd ever written and that he was like ashamed that he had written and published this book because it, it sold so poorly and it was just a terrible book. But it's the story of him going on a road trip and he talks about like all these transformative um, you know, stories that he had along the way of what it was like to go on a road trip in like a Volkswagen van. And that was like the 
biggest inspiration for me whenever we were talking about going on this road trip. I'm like, he had all these cool stories about going to the Grand Canyon and about camping out and seeing all these these beautiful things across the country. And I was like, I want that. And whenever we first started talking about doing this unconventional honeymoon, it wasn't going to be a trip to all 50 states. But whenever I read this book and a couple other books about people going on road trips, I was like, okay, we we're going to do this because this isn't, maybe this is like a stupid American thing to think, but like road trips can change your life. And I think that a lot of young people believe that. And I've read a quote of like, most young people do believe that like a road trip will somehow magically change your life. But I think that's, that's true in a lot of ways of if you, if you go into it, knowing that you can be transformed by travel and by these different places that you visit, then you will be. And I think that's, that's true in our lives. We're totally different people now that we've, we've traveled. Yeah, absolutely. Heath touched on death in meditations. So revisit that. At the end of your life, what do you want to be remembered for? Whew. She's looking at me, so I guess that means I have to answer first. <laughs> you touched on the death theme. I did wow. touch on the death theme. And I, and I think I used to have a better grasp on on this question. And it has it, and even though I think about it often, I think whenever I think about you know, death, I, I close my eyes and I think about all the things I want to accomplish in my life, probably like very, you know, vain things that, you know, maybe not necessarily vain, but just like, you know, I wish I would have written this book or I wish I would have filmed this documentary. Um, and so I think for me, um, when I think about what I want to be known for, I'd say that I want to be known as a guy who is honest and who lived a life that challenged the status quo, who didn't just take things at face value, but, um, you know, figured them out for himself, who, who took action and, and loved people. I mean, I know that probably sounds cliche, but I mean, those, if I'm known for those things, they'll, they'll make me a really happy guy and let the accomplishments fall where they will. And while Heath mentioned it earlier that I'd like took screenshots of his bucket list that he posted on Facebook, but something that we talked about, um, I guess when we were dating is that we, we had all these big bucket list things. And something that Heath would tell me all the time was, I don't want to settle. Um, and that was like a big thing that we talked about before we got married. And that was like part of my vows to him is that I'm not going to let Heath settle because I know that's really important to him. And so we kind of decided that in our marriage, we want to be the kind of couple that doesn't just write bucket lists. I mean, when I hear bucket lists, you know, that's, that's things you want to do before, before you, you die, before you kick the bucket. And uh, we want to be the kind of couple, the kind of marriage, the kind of people that accomplish things and accomplish things together. So if we could leave a legacy of not only like, you can do these great things with your life, but you can do these great things in your marriage. You can work toward these goals together and leave that um, that impression, that kind of uh, legend. That's not is that the right word? Legend. Legacy. Legacy. Thank you. <laughs> that legacy to to our kids and people that are around us. That you can accomplish a, a lot in life, and you can do that in a marriage and together with another person. There's more than one reason why you were a couple after our hearts when we met you. <laughs> Speaking of legacy, is there someone that you know who is outside of the spotlight, but is doing something important that's having an impact that the world should know about? Yes. So, I mean, that question really embodies a lot of what our documentary was going to be about when we started out. We are like, we want to tell the stories of people across the country who don't get their stories told. And we kind of walked into it not knowing like, what kind of stories are we going to hear? And so early on, we heard about like, people who were running like nonprofit football leagues in their town and people, um, you know, who've just accomplished these great things in their community. But there's one woman that really stuck out to us whose story that we wanted to share. And her name is Lori. And um, she works an hourly job for the city of Missoula up in Montana. And from just like meeting her and talking to her and like working with her throughout the morning, uh, she just seemed like, you know, a normal average mom. She's in her 40s. She's athletic. She was telling us about how she'd like just run a marathon. So like we were, you know, thought she was really cool. But then she um, she takes us to like the local bookstore and shows us that she's actually a published author about um, she wrote a memoir, uh, an autobiography about her life and her struggle with 
bipolar disorder. And when she's not working her her full-time hourly job, she's going out to local colleges and schools and police departments and doing um, educational talks about bipolar disorder and what it's like to struggle with mental illness and working really hard to kind of remove the stigma for people who do struggle with mental illnesses. And this is just this huge passion of hers that she's really being impactful in her local community. And it's just such an inspiring story for us to meet her because for one, it, it, it iterated to us that like, you don't know what's going on in someone's life until you actually get to know them, until you actually you know, talk to them. Because we never would have known that this perfectly normal, nice woman struggled with mental illness. And we never would have assumed that, you know, working in this hourly job, that on the side, she would be a published author and a speaker and have these great, uh, you know, dreams of, you know, reaching people. And I think that was just like the biggest, biggest, most inspirational thing that could have happened. And that happened right in the like first month of our trip and just kind of showed us like what we're doing matters because we get to capture the stories of these people who maybe you otherwise wouldn't get, get to tell them. And that's huge. Yeah, that is huge. Is there one thought that you'd like to leave with listeners that you believe could make a difference in their lives? Ooh, just one thought. I think at least because maybe we talk about this a lot lately, it's like, don't be afraid of what other people say or what other people think. And that's like the most cliche thing that people have been telling me since I've, I'm five years old, but I think I need those reminders. And I, I hope that other people need those reminders too, because whenever we started out, we actually, we kind of documented, like we got three very distinct reactions from people. People our age thought that what we were doing was really cool. And people who were older, like retiree age, they thought it was really cool that we were traveling and chasing our dreams because they wish they would have done it when they were younger. But then there was this whole gamut of middle-aged people who thought that it was irresponsible, that we were wasting our time, that we weren't being, you know, good good stewards, that we weren't being good examples to the people around us. And so it kind of showed us like right off the bat, like not everyone's going to support you with whatever your journey might be. And not everyone is going to agree with what you're doing, but you know, two thirds of people will, and you can't let those naysayers be the people that you hear the loudest. Hear, hear. Preach. (laughs) I would say, I would say that, uh, don't ever quit pursuing self. What I mean by that is that it's, there's a lot of advice out there on, um, how to be the best you and uh, how to, you know, grow a blog or do things a certain way that are very mechanic, uh, I don't know, well marketed and, you know, like here's the right way to basically be successful and that, um, you know, you should, you know, do this and do this for, where I think if the more that we can learn to uh, just bring our unique self up to the surface that we end up being able to offer things that nobody else in the world can offer. And that's where we can become really valuable to people. And that instead of trying to do things like everybody else is doing, figure out what works best for, for you. You know, in my own case, like I only, I can only offer the experiences that Heath Paget can offer. And Alyssa can only offer the experiences that she can offer and hers are unique in that, you know, all of the past things of who she, where she's worked and um, what she's written and her experience in life can offer this kind of unique perspective. Um, And so I think that just being able to uh, reiterate that to people that, you know, you have, you are unique and you do have something to offer to people and it doesn't have to be what everybody else says it is. That's huge. Well, folks can find your comings and going on the Hourly America Project through Facebook forward slash Hourly America Mm -hmm. and give us your each of your Twitter, Instagram handles. And also these will be listed in the show notes as well. Yeah. So mine is uh, my website is HeathPaget.com and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram uh, all at Heath Paget, like the Heath, like the candy bar, P-A-D-G-E-T-T. Yeah, I'm AlyssaPaget.com, but I'm Alyssa Page without the T's on Instagram and Twitter because the other Alyssa Paget is is not me. And please don't get us confused because she says really mean things that I would never say on Twitter. <laughs> Just for the record. Just for the record, that is not me. 
but it's not you. You guys have, I've never heard say anything.